Elon Musk is closer to his mission to send a man into space. His company SpaceX sold its first ticket to the moon. Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maizawa board, uh, will board the SpaceX Big Falcon rocket as early as 2023. And the trip will cost Musk's company $5 billion. Maria Virial spoke with a future space tourist. I choose to go to the moon. In front of a packed house, SpaceX founder Elon Musk introduced his newest partner in space exploration, billionaire Yusaku Mazawa. I thought about how I can give back to the world and how this can contribute to world peace. This is my lifelong dream. The founder of Japan's largest retail website, Mazawa purchased every seat on the trip and plans to bring up to eight artists along for the ride. These artists will be asked to create something after they return to Earth. And these masterpieces will inspire the dreamer within all of us. The BFR rocket will be nearly 400 feet long and equipped with a reusable booster rocket that will produce 200 tons of thrust. The plan is to send passengers around the moon and back a more than 475,000 mile journey in about five days. This is a dangerous mission. <laughs> this, but it's definitely dangerous. I'm not afraid of at all. You're not afraid at all? No. Why? How? I trust the SpaceX team. But SpaceX has had problems meeting deadlines. Its last rocket, the Falcon Heavy, had its first successful launch nearly five years later than expected. What makes you so sure that you can actually meet that 2023 deadline? It's not 100% certain that we succeed in getting this to flight, but we're going to do everything humanly possible to bring it to flight as fast as, as we can um, and as safely as we can. It's a risky investment 42-year-old Mazawa is willing to make for a shot at a lunar legacy. Mireya Villarreal in Hawthorne, California. CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood watched the SpaceX event and he joins us now from Merritt Island, Florida. So Bill, Musk's price tag on this is $5 billion to make the Big Falcon rocket and uh, he said it could be done by 2023. Do you think that's realistic? Well, I think both those things uh, bear some thinking about. He said $5 billion is a kind of a ballpark estimate. He said it could be as high as 10. It could be less. He really doesn't know at this point. And that's a key factor uh, to see if he can get it done by 2023 because it's a privately funded rocket. You know, NASA has helped pay for the Falcon rockets that launch cargoes to the space station. And starting next year, we'll be carrying astronauts to the station. But the VFR uh, is an in-house program. And he said last night he's really going to need some help funding uh, you know, getting money together to be able to pay for this. So can he launch by 2023? On paper, he says yes, uh, but that assumes no major problems and it assumes funding. So I think there are a lot of unknowns here that would make me a little bit hesitant to embrace that 2023 figure. You know, it's not just the money bill that caught our attention. It's also that in this announcement, he repeatedly said this mission is dangerous. And it's not kind of a message, the reassuring message you want to hear, especially when you're putting in this much money into a project. So walk us through this. What makes this project particularly so perilous? Well, it is a huge rocket. As you said earlier, you know, this is a 400 foot tall beast. Uh, it would be more powerful than the Saturn V moon rocket, you know, that launched the Apollo missions to the moon, which to this day is still the most powerful rocket ever built. Uh, we think there's something like 31 engines in the first stage. Uh, I think seven in the upper stage that carries the people, but just a lot of technology. There's a lot of moving parts, very complicated technology, uh, and perfecting that, getting it right the first time and making it all work flawlessly every flight, that's a huge challenge. And I think Musk was just being honest by saying, look, anytime you build something like this, it is never going to be risk-free. It is always going to be dangerous to some extent. And he's right. You know, you wrote an article for CBSNews.com and you sort of broke this all down. And you say, I said, as you mentioned just now, SpaceX is trying to attempt to make this rocket the most powerful, powerful enough to actually go to Mars. Do you see that really happening? You know, the thing about Elon Musk and SpaceX is he's a, he's a hardcore believer in the need to move humanity out into the solar system. He talks about, frequently talks about, you know, helping facilitate a multi-planet species. Uh, he's, he talked about that last night in making the announcement about the BFR. Uh, he wants a mechanism, he wants infrastructure in place down the road uh, that can carry people out into the solar system, as he put it, because you never know if it could be a natural disaster on Earth, war, or famine, I mean, anything uh, that could affect life and civilization as we know it. And he believes that. 
Uh, he has been talking for years about building a big rocket that can carry large numbers of people out into the solar system. And the BFR is the design that has gotten to this point in that dream. Now, whether he can pull that off or not, again, it's just too early to say. But, you know, a lot of people would have doubted he could have gotten to, the company could have gotten to where it is today from launching a simple Falcon 1 rocket 10 years ago to being able to launch, you know, multiple flights to the space station and even a Tesla Roadster on a flight to Mars mm -hmm. when he launched that Falcon Heavy earlier this year. So you can't sell him short, but, but this is a big dream. Yeah, very I complicated, very expensive. Bill, I'm curious what NASA has to think about this. Do you think they might take advantage of the technology of a private developer like SpaceX? Well, that's a good question. Uh, they are certainly trying to encourage commercial development of low Earth orbit. They want more companies to get involved. They want help in building rockets and hardware that can move out into space. I think if the BFR becomes a, a tried and true rocket, if the costs are reasonable or even less than what NASA is already thinking about spending, it would certainly be an attractive alternative. Uh, but, but you've got to establish a track record, prove it's a safe vehicle, and of course it's got to be affordable. And again, these are all questions that have yet to be answered. We're not going to know those things until this, this, this beast gets out to a launch pad and they start flying it. I'm curious, you've got an ear to the space community. How are they reacting? You know, I think everybody is wowed by just the daring of it. You know, I mean, that's the one thing about SpaceX. You know, there are a lot of critics out there about the way SpaceX does some uh, does their business. But on the other hand, there's a lot of admiration for the audacity of the company, you know, dreaming big dreams. I mean, you know, like we talked about a minute ago, launching that Tesla Roadster on a flight to Mars. You know, some companies would have just put a dummy payload on that rocket. But, you know, they, they like to get attention. They like to inspire people. And... Uh, I think, I think the reaction of NASA to a lot of the things SpaceX is doing is very favorable. Mm. I think they wish him a lot of luck, but I also mm. think they've been in the game for a long time. You, talk's cheap. You know, you got to get the rocket to the pad and launch it safely. That's the bottom line. So fascinating to watch exactly how this all unfolds. Bill Harwood, grateful you can join us, Bill. My pleasure.